Do you like my turtle earrings? My Costa Rican handmade turtle earrings, my Costa Rican handmade wooden bracelets, and my Costa Rican Pura Vida bracelets. Nice. This was all handmade <laughs> in Costa Rica. You could say that. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, those Annoying, annoying vegans. vegans. And today we're going to show you how to make the quintessential Costa Rican dish. And it requires no veganizing. Yes, gallo pinto. Gallo pinto. <laughs> gallo pinto is our national dish. And like Brian said, it requires no veganizing. Although sometimes people eat it with a side of eggs, there's always vegan egg. Sometimes we mix it with natilla, which is our version of sour cream. It's a little bit sweeter, but we tried it with Hampton Creek's Just Mayo and it was so good. Enjoy it with a side of toast and guava jelly or a side of sweet plantains for the ultimate Costa Rican experience. That's right. Now this dish is traditionally had for breakfast because it's not spicy. It's quite mild and very flavorful and it is named as such because the black beans mixed with the white rice resembles a spotted rooster, which is its literal translation. And as always, this recipe is delicious, affordable, and easy to make. So let's make it. Let's make it. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> So nobody really knows where Gallo Pinto originated. Sometimes there's this, like, was it Nicaragua? Was it Costa Rica? Either way, every Central American country has its own version of Gallo Pinto. There's um, Casamiento in El Salvador. There's Moros con Cristianos in Cuba. It is said that Latin Caribbeans brought it to Central America. On the east side of Costa Rica, they actually make it with coconut milk. And it's delicious everywhere, and everybody has their own way of preparing it. It's quite good. If you're uh, someone who is afflicted with something that I have, which is where cilantro kind of tastes like soap or shampoo, it kind of has a, a metallic-y, soapy taste to it, you can always sub out the cilantro for parsley. The salsa lisano is the real secret ingredient here. The salsa lisano. I know I've linked to it before in yes. a previous video. I will link to it again. This, this right is here. the key to Costa Rican <laughs> cuisine. Take a close look. It's, it's so available good. on Amazon. Yeah. This is a giant bottle. I have three more. It's the connective tissue of the, the muscles that are Gaiju Pinto. That just mayo on top or try it with some veganaise. Wow. Wow, seriously, you guys will love it. You can also make it with pinto beans. Sometimes, mm -hmm. even in Costa Rica, they make it with pinto beans. I like it with black beans. We used canned beans. The traditional way of making it is, of course, to start from scratch and soak your beans overnight and drain them and then cook them. 
That takes a little while. If you'd like to make it that way, go for it. But we like to keep things simple. And don't drain the juice because you want the rice to get brown. That is the traditional way of eating it. Lunch, breakfast, dinner. <laughs> yeah, we can have it's it good. for all the day, all the times all of the, the day. All the times of the day. <laughs> so for our vegan talking point today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about something that's really been bugging me for a while. Does veganism count as a social justice warrior thing? It's not talked about it's as not... much as others. Yeah. Doesn't it feel a little hypocritical to you? All these people talking about gender equality, racial equality, um, LGBTQ, all these social justice movements that we're seeing, yet they're perfectly comfortable with sitting down and eating a steak dinner. It's a complete disconnect from the idea of equality on the whole. Yeah. As there's a very good documentary called Speciesism, and that's exactly what that is. We're human, and so we're somehow different or better than all of the other animals on the planet. There was a time in our history, and it still happens because these issues haven't been completely resolved, we can't even treat each other equally. People feel like it's their call to decide what rights to delegate to others based on qualifications that they deem important. When the topic of animal rights comes up, some of these responses really shock me. I hear, well, we're talking about animals. I mean, these are people. Weren't slaves treated like animals? Nazis called Jewish people Untermensch, which means subhuman. They called them vermin. They were treated terribly. And we are doing that to animals now. You're telling me that we are differentiating animals from us because they look different, they sound different, they live differently. Doesn't that sound familiar? Tell me how that makes sense in the fight for equality. How do you pick and choose who to discriminate against? We know that it is right to treat some animals the way that we treat humans because we already do that. People call their pets their children all the time. Like people treat cats well, they treat dogs well, they treat parakeets well, they treat any animal that you would keep in your house. We know how to treat those animals and we fully understand and we fully realize and we fully state that they have things like joy and fear and happiness and sadness. We know that that's true. Then the question becomes, well, what really is the difference between a cat and a pig or a dog and a chicken? The difference is what you made it up to be. It's convenience. It's what people have known their whole lives. They're born into a world that has already decided these very, very few, very, very select species don't count. As Gary Yarofsky has said in interviews before, we've decided that some species count and some species don't count. Yeah. They're just cows, they're just pigs, they're just chickens. Why? Why is that the norm? It's kind of weird. When you just step back and look at it for what it is, it's odd. That is the type of mindset that you need to get past. All it takes is just a little bit of retooling your mind. There should be no qualification when it comes to equality. We no. are all inherently equal. I mean, how do you explain people who are currently vegetables? Or someone that suffers from a mental illness or someone that is in any way different. Just because you deem some living being to be different than you doesn't mean that that living being values its life any less than you do. And it doesn't And it's really... not up to you to try and figure out if they do. No. And the level of sentience and level of, well, does it have a full nervous system or is it just a cluster of nerves and what does it feel and what does it not feel? And it, it's kind of irrelevant. If you watch the slaughterhouse footage, any amount of slaughterhouse footage, you will very, very quickly realize that cows very much value their lives. They very much value their children. They very much value their relationships to one another. And they know what's going on in the slaughterhouse. And they're scared and they're terrified and they're treated very badly. And we know that we've just culturally just- Swept it under the rug. Yeah, there's just this cultural zeitgeist of, that's okay, it's just a cow, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But if it, they were all dogs or they were all kittens, everyone would be losing their minds. <laughs> I find that people who have truly experienced oppression and discrimination and feeling less than, if it doesn't start with compassion first and just a natural empathy, those people truly understand what that is like. There is a Holocaust survivor who is also an animal rights activist, 
uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of him, Peter Singer. And he has all these wonderful things to say, all these connections that he's made. Even, even people who aren't Jewish get offended at the fact that he is comparing the Holocaust of the Jewish people to the Holocaust of animals, as he calls it. But he was there. He knows what suffering looks like. I'm gonna read you this quote. If a being suffers, there can be no moral justification for refusing to take that suffering into consideration. No matter what the nature of the being, the principle of equality requires that its suffering be counted equally with the like suffering, insofar as rough comparisons can be made, of any other being. So the limit of sentience is the only defensible boundary of concern for the interests of others. To mark this boundary by some other characteristic like intelligence or rationality would be to mark it in an arbitrary manner. Why not choose some other characteristic like skin color? Dick Gregory, a black civil rights activist, he says, because I am a civil rights activist, I am also an animal rights activist. Animals and humans suffer and die alike. Violence causes the same pain, the same spilling of blood, the same stench of death, the same arrogant, cruel, and vicious taking of life. We shouldn't be a part of it. He said he became vegetarian when he saw a Mississippi sheriff kick his wife, who was nine months pregnant at the time. He said, I had to convince myself that the reason I did nothing was that I was nonviolent. A lot of people claim to be nonviolent, but they still passively participate in it by consuming animal products. They're not doing the killing, but someone else is. Every human being that we know is good and would never do the things to animals that is done to animals inside of a factory farm. But what you have to understand is that when you go to McDonald's, when you go to In-N-Out, when you go to the grocery store and you buy the steak or the chicken or the pork or whatever, you're supporting them with your dollar. And your dollar matters. As we said many times, that's your voice. That's your vote. What you buy tells companies that that's what you want, so that's what they're gonna continue to make. You have three to five opportunities every single day. What you have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks, dessert, mm -hmm. whatever you want. You have an opportunity every time to make a choice. What goes on in a factory farm is not nature. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like a grizzly bear catching a salmon or a lion taking down a gazelle. Yeah. It's nothing like that. No. It's never been like that. In fact, the human body functions better on a plant-based diet. Shall we end on a happy note? Yeah. Esta mañana no canto Todo el mundo espera su cocorico for this song. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is from my childhood. Like... I completely forgot that this existed. It's saying that the gallo pinto didn't wake up to say it's cock-a-doodle-doo, oh. so the sun didn't come out. Uh, it's <laughs> very every... important. If the rooster does not crow, the sun does not come up. That's just science. It's science. <laughs>